Hi, here are some tips on how to share the gospel with non-Christians. One of the most important parts in sharing the gospel is understanding the person you're talking to and how you view them. And I think it's really important to have a successful conversation with somebody who doesn't know Jesus and doesn't know the gospel is to approach it with love and patience and understanding that they are not capable of knowing uh, the ways of God or living for God without the spirit. So that's who you're talking to is someone who's not capable. So they will be living a sinful lifestyle with no shame and they will not feel convicted of their sin. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, it says this. It says, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Yeah, just remember that going into it, that they are not able to understand. Even when you share the gospel with them, they're not maybe not able to understand it still. And they might ask questions that reflect a mind that doesn't understand. So just be prepared. Expect that. I'm just here to talk about Jesus because it is the best thing that I could ever talk about. And I'm also here to plant seeds for the Holy Spirit to do what only the Holy Spirit can do. And I cannot, I cannot save somebody, neither can you. I wasn't saved until I was 20. And so I guess I've been a Christian for about 12 years. And I remember vividly what it was like before I was a Christian. So I remember the there was like a actual Christian family that I knew at the time and I thought they were weird. And I'm now, like, I could just cry thinking about how now I'm so glad that I get to be the weird Christian. Yeah, I remember all of that. I remember how I felt about it. And I remember what I thought that you had to be a good person to go to heaven. And I thought I was a good enough person. And I think most people think that they're good people because they're measuring their own um, morality to other human beings. So it's like, you know, you haven't gone to jail, you haven't killed somebody. We have to let them know that that's actually not how God sees it. And so we have to just tell them what the gospel is and knowing it for yourself is not only transformative for your own life, but it makes it possible to share it with other people. Because you can't share the gospel if you don't really know the gospel. The reality is for me is if I'm around someone who's not a Christian, I'm always looking for uh, openings to say something. And... I also genuinely like am talking to them. So I'm not just using them as a way to talk about the gospel. I'm like being a friend to them. I'm hanging out with them. So there isn't an ulterior motive, but there is an end goal here for me. Um, in addition to their friendship, I'm able to talk to people and have a relationship with them. I think it's really important that you can just be a normal person with them so that they're more receptive to what you're going to say. And then it feels more natural when you do bring it up. So I really recommend that. Like read the person that you're talking to, uh, get to know them, take an interest in their life and don't judge them. And my favorite way to bring up the gospel if there is an opportunity in the conversation is I don't wanna lose them right away. So I won't, I will wait for the right time. I think there is a right time and there's probably a wrong time. Um, Cause you, you, like I said, you don't wanna lose them. You don't want them to be like, this person's crazy. They might either way. But uh, typically I don't have people thinking I'm crazy while I'm talking to them. So I will wait for an opening. Sometimes I create an opening if I can, and that will be to mention church in some way. You know, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm going to church. I'm leading the youth group, whatever it is. That's my opening. Like I will throw that out there and I will kind of see if they say anything. If they leave that alone, I will just leave that and maybe wait for another time, another day, but I'll just sort of throw that out there. If they start asking questions about that, I will, like my favorite way to start with the gospel, I'll just like point out the fact that I didn't realize what the gospel was. And I might say something like, I grew up Catholic, I had no idea what the gospel was. And then when I heard it, it was amazing. And I think a lot of people don't know what the real gospel is. So that's kind of my opener. I'm not going to make it about the other person's life. I'm gonna make it about my life. So I'm not going to be like, you do this, 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 and this. You know, I'll say I do this, this, and this, or I did. And maybe I'll say we so that they understand that they're involved in it, but you really don't, don't make it like that you're shaming them. I think it's more of a realization the way that I do it is like, look at how we all need Jesus. And I will go through the gospel, but I'll start it with like how people think that you have to be a good person to go to heaven and that's not how it is. 
99% of the time, the person I'm talking to probably thinks that way, or they don't believe in heaven at all and they're atheist or agnostic. I like to keep it really simple. I usually say that the Ten Commandments are actually a mirror to reveal our sin and no one can keep them and we all have fallen short. And so when you look at the Ten Commandments, it's not necessarily a list that we need to try to attain to become good enough because we can't. That is the standard, but we can't do it. And so I will go through the Ten Commandments, just like a couple of them, and I'll just be like, you know, uh, it says that you shouldn't commit murder, but Jesus says that if you've ever hated someone in your heart, you're a murderer. And so I'll tell them, like, I'm a murderer. And so if you say, uh, uh, you know, if you've ever stolen anything, um, you're a thief. So I'll say I'm a murdering thief. If you've ever told a lie, you know, that I've broken that. So you say I'm a, I'm a murdering lying thief. That's only three and it sounds pretty bad so far. So I'll go through those things and I'll say like, do you see how it reveals our sin? And like sin means, uh, you know, wrongdoing against God. What God wants you to do, you don't do it. So I like to also define those terms because um, I think it's helpful. And then I like to use a court analogy because what Jesus did on the cross was a legal transaction. He took the punishment in our place that we earned. And so I really, I think the analogy of court is helpful. It was helpful for me. And so I will say, um, you know, it's as if you committed a crime and you go to court and you um, have to pay the punishment for that, you know, the penalty for that. And you can say to a judge, I'm really sorry. I re and you can be really sorry, but the judge is not going to just say to you, I'm so glad you're sorry. And now you can go um, because someone has to pay for that crime. And it's just like that with the gospel. So you can say to God, you're sorry. And that is important. But without Jesus paying the penalty on our behalf, we are not free to go. We are still in debt in that way. We are unable to pay the penalty ourselves. So Let's just say you're in court, you committed a crime, you can't pay it, you can't, you can't pay the punishment, you can't pay the fine, and Jesus comes in and he pays it for you, and now you're free to go. That's what the gospel is. So all of the sin that we have is forgiven, and Jesus paid the penalty. And like, I mean, I would love to get further into, you know, Jesus being the sacrificial lamb and why we needed that perfect sacrifice, the blood sacrifice to cover us, it usually doesn't typically get that far. So I'll put that on my social media or whatever, but that's pretty much what I do. And I try to get them interested. And I'm telling you the way that I do this, this way, they are listening to me and they are understanding. I could see it. They're listening. They don't feel attacked. They don't feel judged. They're genuinely learning new information that they did not know. And I think for me, that's huge because the Bible also says that in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes from hearing. Just tell them what the gospel is. Tell them these truths and faith can come from hearing that. It's really important that you say the words and there's no reason to not say the words. Um, the only time that I pull back and I don't speak about the gospel to someone is if I've already shared it with them and they know it. And then I pull back because I do think that that can be too much and you don't want to push people away. So I think you know when that is. I think sometimes people, you know, want to think that they don't have to say the words. And I, for me personally, I never understood, and this has been one of the things in my Christian walk for 12 years that I have struggled with around me, is um, hearing Christians look for excuses and reasons to not say the greatest words that you will ever say. I don't understand it. So um, maybe that means that we need to understand it better because if you fully understood the gospel, you would not look for reasons to not say the words. You would look for reasons to say them. You would find opportunities and make opportunities to say them. And if there are no opportunities, you would be putting it on social media or wherever you are. So, um, I just hope that we can all get to that point because I need help out here. I have friends and family who are not saved. The best things that I could do and say in my whole life are to tell someone that Jesus is King, that Jesus is God. He is our savior. There is no other God besides Jesus. He is the one. He's the name above all names. Um, without him, we are dead spiritually and without him, we are going to hell. Um, but Jesus is so good and so amazing. It doesn't make any sense apart from God because 
it's just the greatest, the gospel is the greatest thing I've ever heard. And I just can't believe that I get to experience that in my life. Um, I haven't earned it. I don't deserve it. I fail God every single day. And just to hear that he forgives me um, every day is amazing. So anyway, um, yeah, I also have shared the gospel with Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses and other Catholics. And um, I hope to, I haven't really shared the gospel with any Jewish people, but I'm ready with Isaiah 53. And so I hope to um, continue to have opportunities where I can uh, reach all these different types of people. I also have learned about all the major religions and cults so that I'm ready to understand them right away when I meet them. I'm able to talk to Mormons in a different way because I know what they believe. And so it's a different strategy for me, but that's a whole other level. And those are just like my interests. So yeah, that's kind of it for this sort of introduction to sharing the gospel. And to just remember that um, I think one of the reasons that I am able to share it kind of easily is because I remember when I was not a Christian. And so I don't see it as like them versus us. I see it as like, I was one of you and you could be one of us. Like, it's just sort of like, you're not saved yet, but this will be a part of your story. I just love talking to them. I don't have animosity towards them. You know, them, us, me. I mean, if you're watching this, I 13 years ago was spiritually dead. So, and now I'm not. And so I'm, I'm the same person, but I just hope that people would have had the heart to want to talk to me also, because look what God can do from that. Um, is he can make someone who is dead alive. So that is this first video. Thank you for sticking with me. And um, that's it. Bye.